hosts, Charlotte Pierce and Tara Morgan from Seize the Your Foundation. We are here. We're we're still talking. We're still walking. We're we're surviving. We've had a lot of great interviews. We're with the Rowing Chat Podcast Network, and we are Ready Row USA. Here is a one of our major wonderful correspondents, and. We've had uh, Sir Matthew Pinson. We've had Anita de France stop by and do an interview. So check us out on the Rowing Chat, Rowing Chat, or the Facebook page for the Rowing Chat Podcast Network, YouTube, and all that good stuff. And it will eventually be on the your favorite audio podcast app as well. So Tara, you've been up to a lot today. Yeah, you've it's been, been a busy weekend so I far. Know. I, you know, I'm. You I'm covering uh, a few different topics. So these are all topics that if you're out there and you couldn't be here, I've been hitting up uh, the referee track, the coach track, the master's track, the safety track. So I just came from a session actually where mm -hmm. Rachel Lemieux and the U.S. Rowing Safety Committee, these are not referees, but right. these are yeah. safety committee members are having really important discussions about what your safety plan is, what's supposed to be in your launch boat, what's your coach to rower ratio, practicing uh, rescues, looking at different wind apps and all of that. So, you know, making sure that every boathouse is not necessarily standardized because mm -hmm. they know that every boathouse is unique in terms of whether you're coastal or whether you're on a reservoir or whether you have this and that. But as, as coaches are so transient and coaches mm -hmm. turnover is so high, the same information, making it to each coach and each kid and each person involved, is it's getting lost at a lot of boathouses. And so there was a lot of horror stories. Were there about, some solutions? There's some near fatal accidents, some fatal accidents oh that have happened yeah. in the last couple of years. Um, Do you think there's more than usual? No, I don't think mm -hmm. so. I think, uh, you know, the, the two that I know about are the kid uh, in, in Boston, yeah. the Northeastern kid who there was a combination of things there, cold water, people who dove in after him and just did, you know, not yeah. standard safety practices. Um, he didn't know how to swim very well. And he told people, yeah, he didn't tell his coach yeah. and, you know, that kind of thing. And then uh, the, uh, of course, the para rower in yeah. Poland who passed away because his pontoon fell off and then he had a medical incident. It was a Belarusian. It was a Belarusian yeah. uh, uh, scholar. So yeah. so we at Seize the Or, one of the things coming out of this is that we would actually like to make some safety videos of how to do yeah. adaptive rescue. So hopefully next summer um, right. we'll Great do some, because we have water that's warm enough yeah. and we could actually go to a pool yeah. and do it and nice. do some safety nice. videos. So anyway, one of the other cool things that I would- What did you do yesterday? Yesterday was celebration of women in rowing. And, you know, you and I come from, uh, my, as my coach, uh, old coach, uh, past coach, not old coach, past coach, Eleanor McElvain from Counterbury Rowing Club would tell us, uh, you are standing on the shoulders of giants mm -hmm. when you go out as a woman rower in this country. Um, this hasn't always been the case where we've been um, able to train and row and compete at the same level as, as our male yeah, counterparts. Yeah, stop and appreciate that once in a while. Yeah. That's so great. this event yesterday was really special. Um, it was at the Vesper Boathouse. It was co-produced by uh, Schuylkill Navy, and there's an organization called Women of the Row, which means Women uh, of Boathouse Row. Which is the famous row of boathouses in Philadelphia. Right, drive right. by at night, it's just beautiful. It's beautiful. Uh, yeah. And actually tonight, uh, Ryan Wirth, a uh, correspondent and I are going to be out at the Rock the Road of yeah. row event producing some content. Yep. But we did this event yesterday called Celebrating Women in Rowing, and it really spotlighted a couple of things. The first was uh, Anita de France, who is a stalwart ambassador for women in the sport and uh, gender equity in the sport. And she's at a very high level in the sport. She's at the, the uh, U.S. Olympic Committee, yes. a very, very high level. She's a celebrated Olympian from 1976. She's African American. I mean, she's got all sorts of, mm. of great credentials. Um, she's extremely uh, well well spoken, generous. Yeah. You name it. Written a book. My Olympic Life was here doing book signings. She was the keynote, and then the featured group that recognized was the 1976 women's team, including the pair rowers, the quad, and the eight 
select the people from that team. And they did a panel and it was pretty mind blowing. Uh, one other aspect of that event was uh, the screening of the film, Kiss the Joy, the story of Joan Lind Van Blom, who is a celebrated rower from Long Beach, um, California, who was one of very first uh, women to get into competitive and Olympic rowing and was on that 1976 team and tragically passed away uh, a few years ago. What so this is a story. beautiful documentary yeah. done by Jean Strauss. Can people find that online? Yeah, you can look up Jean Strauss, uh, J E A N S T R A U S S dot okay. com. Okay. And she's done a number of other films. She's a filmmaker. Yes. Um, she did talk about how she could make accessible some screener copies of that. Oh, She's wow. having some challenges with distribution yeah. um, on a larger scale. But so it's, you could get it at a club event or something. Yeah, you might yeah. be able to get it for your club and maybe yeah. do a fundraiser or do an awareness yeah, raiser. Cool. It's really important for the young women coming up and rowing to see this film. It's important for me. I, people you know, need I just, to see this. It's yeah. just, of all the doctors I've seen lately, yeah, it was in the last 10 years or whatever. It's the extremely most well done. Yeah. Well done. Would you want to? So one thing that I yeah. did was uh, one question I love to ask people is <laughs> describe the perfect stroke. Yes. So I we, made a little movie. We asked uh, Matthew Pinsent and and they need to France that earlier today too. Let me run the, the, the film and or the little <laughs> film. Do you want to go to full screen? Oh, yeah. Go to full screen. And yeah, I think we can talk over it if you want. I feel like that once. I feel like many times. The one time I remember in college, the line was a four. It went really good. I had a really good practice one day, and it just got up this line. It felt like all the words were off. You could hear the water. That was just the sound. For the sound of the, the water on the shell and, the, and the, nothing touching the water. Everybody in sync, right on the shell, and that, that was perfect. And you almost look breathy because you don't want to be over. And then you do it again. And then you just go, try it again, try it again, try it again. You know, I don't like the high bat. I like the high roll. I'm not going to, yeah, I'm not going to describe the perfect stroke because. Frankly, there's too much controversy about what the perfect stroke is. If you're moving a boat, that's the perfect stroke. <laughs> Fair enough. You know, are you moving the boat? Are you being efficient? Then that's your perfect stroke. Whatever that is for you, that works. That works. Thank you. That's all I have to say. <laughs> perfect stroke. Um, Let the, allows the boat to do the work for it. And um, 
it should just be that, that, that little bit of effort for yourself, a big, big, big push, and um, just an easy, easy, easy catch. And um, again, the, the sensation, the two well, the sensation of the crunch is wild. It's like wine. It's like wine. Yeah, so that was it was really cute. That was great. I love yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. It's such a great question to ask people. Mm -hmm. Um because there's, I've found it in my research about it, my sort of informal research mm -hmm. about it, that people fall into one of two camps. <laughs> there's either, no, it's either the possible or not possible. Oh, okay. It isn't possible that they have a perfect stroke. There's people who believe the perfect stroke is not possible, yeah. that it's this elusive unicorn, mm -hmm. right? And then even within those two camps, you have the technical and the poetic, or the technical and the philosophical. And I've gotten some amazing responses. I'm doing that rowing and aging survey. Yes. And that's one of the questions that's on the survey is describe the first perfect stroke. So is that sound, found on seizeor.com? Are you still yeah. looking for more? I'm still looking for more people to fill yeah, out the survey for sure. I think that's um, very good. I do have a Facebook page called Lifelong Rowing. Right. Uh, also where it's on there. And uh, we're always taking entries. We have over 110 responses from around the world of rowers over the age of 50. Um, but that's one of the questions we ask them. So if you've got some thoughts about yes. uh, the perfect stroke, send them our way. We'll do. Thank you, Tara. And uh, the, the day is not done. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for, for watching and listening. And uh, we are going to be continuing broadcasting this evening with, with um, Steve Hargis, uh, the juniors programs director for U.S. Rowing and a few other surprise guests. And then Tara's going to be going on the Boathouse uh, party. Party tour. Rock the boat, rock the row. Rock the row party. And we'll be actually be here tomorrow morning, Sunday, uh, talking to a few more people, maybe a few more Olympians and and uh, talk about a, a little coxswain, uh, a nice high school coxswain who might come by. Nice. Um, Antonio, I think his name is. And so we're just talking to everyone and trying to connect people. Thanks for listening. And we'll talk to you, listen to you, or hear, hear you. <laughs> we're what a little a, discombobulated. What a, what a, what a, um, we'd love to have you subscribe because then you'll get notice of these impromptu sessions. And thank you very much. This is Charlotte Pierce, producer, signing off with Tara. Bye. Bye. Huh.